Hello and welcome to When Will It End? It's a movie podcast where I'm Josh. This is my good friend Charles. Charles, say hi to the nice people. I got, I got peanut butter. How do you have peanut? We should have a burrito. Yeah, I you was a peanut at, butter I burrito. Up, I went upstairs, made sure the recording stick it was okay, on a, the door. A peanut butter burrito. Now I've heard it all. It's good. Have you had a peanut butter burrito? Never. I, I uh, once when I was in Vermont a few weeks ago, I tried to order a special hamburger sandwich, Ugh. and yeah. they were like, "Our special has peanut butter and hot peppers on it." Yeah. And me being an adventurous soul, and it was I got a black bean burger. All note, but oh, thank I you. I was like, "You're welcome." I was going to say, mm, Charles is a already hate this story, but no, no. I really. would like the peanut butter and the hots on it. But they fucked it up. I didn't get them. What? I didn't. They didn't get them. They also gave us bullshit. fries instead of salads. But honestly, between you and me, I mean, and our listeners, you got to invite the listeners in on this. Hey, listeners, pull up, have a seat. Welcome yeah. to the table. If you're standing, sit. Hey, join us on the fucking couch. Oh my god, we're just couch. chilling on our fucking couch. Yeah, it's really nice. The fries were excellent. I, as I get older, I like fries less and less. Mm-hmm. I think that like a poorly done fry, like too oily. If they come out like fucking like a dark brown or whatever, I hate Ugh. that shit. I think when you're a child, you'll just eat. Any goddamn potato. Oh, sure. Slap a little salt and fat on it and I'll yeah. suck it on down. But yeah, the the craft French fry. It's the most it's the most overhyped shitty thing. Also, you know, the garlic parmesan, the duck fat, the what yeah. the truffle oil. Yeah, it's 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 a fucking bacon dust. It's stupid. You're just dressing up a very boring thing. It's why I don't like poutine. Poutine's gar- it's gross. Anyways, go ahead. Introduce yourself to the people. Wait, I thought you were talking about something. No, I'm explaining that, you know, oh, the I, wanted, story was to, that you I just wanted the peanut get... butter and the hots on the burger. I didn't get it. Well, I, I've been doing this a lot lately. I sort of do this thing where I like latch my mind, finds one thing that I can tell to all the people that I know and it sound really cool and smart. My current one is this. Okay. Americans are the only culture I know that turned peanut butter into a basically only used for sweet things. I mean... Every other goddamn country pairs peanut butter with spicy things. Sure, as one does. A chicken satay, of, of course. Yeah. Pad thai. Pad thai. Yeah. And here we are. Uh, give me peanuts and jelly. It's like a regular, me- do- <laughs> regular doofy over there. <laughs> that was not my intent. Okay. That's the other thing I do, though. When what? people try to out me for being, you know, anything bad, I'm like, well, if you say duh, you're bad, too. And I'm going to have to bleep that out because I, I believe saying duh is really awful. You have shared that. By the way, that was a teaser for our scary movie conversation. Oh, right. I'm realizing we're yet. putting the old uh, doofy reference before the horse here. As you do. As the saying goes. But yeah, I'm Charles. And we just got back from watching Bad Boys 3 like minutes ago. We we awkwardly tried to not talk very much for a while while getting a burrito. And mm-hmm. now that I've slammed a burrito. Oh my God, slam. I feel it. Mm, it's working its way through me. And I yeah. coated that fucking thing in hot sauce. So I know. Right. I know. Isn't that fun? It's you delicious. put the hot sauce on, it's like, oh, it's here now. And then eventually it'll be... You feel it in your soft. You head it down in the old thorax. Yep. Into the bowels below. <laughs> Sploosh, splish. Vroom, vroom. Right up the spicy anus. Hey, it's going to look like the friggin' abandoned hotel at the end of goddamn Bad Boys 3. What is, your belly? Bad Boys for life, my rectum. Yeah. I mean, Just it, broken it really glass and flames and my, my dead witch ex-girlfriend. <laughs> yeah. Bad Boys for life. Third one. I want to go ahead and say that right off the top, this is the quintessential sequel that makes this entire undertaking worthy. Uh, it's the, the first podcast? movie. Or yes, them making this is the kind of movie that makes both franchises and this wonderful, wonderful podcast all worthwhile. Adil and Bilal are the twin directors of this amazing oh, film. Wow, you knew what I was doing. I'm one step ahead of you at all times. Yeah. This movie, Michael Bay's involvement, not directed, not produced. His sole involvement. Really? Cameo as wedding MC. That's incredible. I know. Wait, he didn't even produce it? Didn't produce it. He's, coming, he's coming back for four, which is, I guess, already in the works. Ah. So this movie, Martin well, he was Lawrence- busy. I was going to say, having two movies come out within a month of each other, because he did it Six Underground, the uh, the Netflix original, which I don't know why I didn't get any Oscar nominations. Uh, just classic discrimination against Michael Bay, because the white man is the new terrorized minority in this culture of PC gone, um, what, what year is it? Mm-hmm. 20, it'll be 2020. Fuck. Oh, what? I guess he's not anymore. Oh, really? It's over? Uh, we got Trump back. Oh, wait, what? I'm saying, you know, there was a time where, you know, white men in this country couldn't just fucking ball out and jam as hard as possible. When was that? Well, during the Obama years when the PC oh, police took right, over. Right, right. I see what you're saying. Sorry, I was on. I was. I was thinking like you're talking about real stuff. And now you know, like the the loonies, the commies who own the Oscars, don't want to recognize Michael Bay. Yeah. For Six Feet Under the movie or whatever Six he did. Six Feet Under, yeah, he did that yeah. whole show. You know, Lauren Ambrose lives in the Berkshires. Who's that? 
uh, the uh, Claire from Six Feet Under. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I see her frequently. Great. And like you were a part of a prestige TV. Does she now realize that she's not even as cool as you, award winning journalist in the area? Oh, man. I don't like to flex that I'm an award winning journalist. It, it comes up naturally in conversation, though, sometimes. And it's <laughs> yes, like, because you always introduce yourself as, oh, hi, I'm award winning journalist Josh Landis. Well, I mean, where's the lie? I guess the kids would say. You. Do you end every... Uh, Where's the lie? Every new... What do you call a little news snippet that you do? A story. A story. Every story. My story. Uh, do you feel like a storyteller every time you put on those cans? I think of myself as a dream weaver. A dream weaver, not a storyteller. No, I weave dreams. So even though you make a story, it's more about the dreams that come out of the story. As a journalist, my job is to speak truth to power and look good doing it. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what I'm talking about? One of those <sighs> <laughs> well, it's both. It's both. It's really both. Did I tell you that uh, <clears throat> that hot sauce is not working? Yeah. Uh, someone, uh, an unnamed uh, civic employee in my hometown referred to my porno mustache. Yeah. While I was at work, like at a city event. It is interesting. I know. I was like, like a... you shouldn't say that to people. And like, you know, I'm a reporter. You're at work. You work for the government. It just, I thought it was like a moment where I was like, you know, come on. You sh- you ought to know better. You're Yeah. Adult. Also... That was just the mustache. Well, then I, we were talking about this yesterday. It's not specific to porn. Right. In, in our, it's a generational divide. Yeah. Mustaches are definitely, maybe not gone, but a scarcity. And the kind of mustache you have. Which is a I'm cop not, stash. I, it's traditionally it's, referred to as a cop stash. It's also, it's just, it's the only, it's like the easiest mustache to grow. Well, it's a classic mustache. Yeah. Easy. It's not easy no, to I'm grow I'm just saying, this. like, if you're going to grow yeah, a mustache. I woke up like this? You could do. I did. You did, yeah. Mm. If you could do a John Waters, like, you could actually, like, you could do a Charlie Chaplin. Like, you could actually do things to it. This is literally you're just shaving the rest of your face, and that's about it. Right. I'm not trying to create, take... like, a fucking bonsai. But that's what I'm saying. Like, it's the cop stash. It's the porn stash. It's because that was the mustache. Yeah. It's, it's the mustache. Why not call it the friggin' boilerplate mustache, you know? They do. It's the classic mustache. That's what it's on the poster. Have yeah. you seen this mustache poster? Oh, there it is over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, look at that. Boilerplate. Uh, under B. But, uh, there it is. Yeah, it alphabetizes. They call it a BM, a bowel movement. <clears throat> oh, a boilerplate a boiler mustache. mustache. Yeah, pretty good stuff. Oh, is that what the BM stands for? I thought it was bowel movement. Bad Boys for Life is the quintessential movie for this series. I think it's maybe the most important film we've watched so far because in real time we're watching a long-awaited follow-up. So Bad Boys Two comes out. 17 years oh, ago. Yeah, do that math. Again. No, we don't need to do the math. We just did it. Don't need to. Okay. Bad well, Boys 1, 95. Bad Boys me. 2, 2003. 17 years later, we finally get the dangling third chapter to this cop epic. Yeah. And I guess uh, uh, as early as 2013, Martin Lawrence talked about this on Conan. Really? So this has been kicking around for a very long time. Yeah, it sounds like you've been doing some research. Well, that was me earlier doing the search. Yeah, yeah. Rian, searching, putting I together. I have done any of it. Research. And this movie fucking delivered in every way. If you told me that this was sort of like a... This this felt like the last Jedi of Bad Boys movies, where hmm. the largest structural components of Bad Boys were interrogated in a weirdly sentimental and interesting way. As Marcus transitions to a life after a life of violence and death, and plumbing the crime out of the great streets of beautiful Miami, Florida. He's confronted with what it means to retire, what it means to be a Christian, what it means to be a grandfather. Mm -hmm. The spiritual void he sees in the violent life of his partner and best friend and heterosexual life partner, Mike Lowry. Yeah. And this movie does confront those questions. I love it. First of all, Martin Lawrence is the absolute heart and soul of these movies. Because yeah. as, you're watching Will Smith do his thing, and that's like watching like a finely oiled machine just work, and it's delightful. But Martin Lawrence, as the soul of this movie, was tr- was truly transcendent. I mean, I I have to say that I think they're both the heart and soul. I think they they are different hearts and different souls. It'd be like if one animal had two hearts and two souls. That's a really good way to think about yeah, it. Yeah, what kind? Of, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I'm not going to go down that. I don't care what animal it is. This uh, the fact that you're bailing on a metaphor now. I know I'm, you've come I, a long way. I do not. You're care. like Mike Lowry. I'm like you used Mike to just Lowry. wantonly destroy things, and now you're like, wait, I'll try to be constructive. Yeah, doesn't matter. I think Martin Lawrence. Honestly, for me, there were how many times did you cry when you watched this? I was delighted the whole time. I didn't. I you didn't, didn't cry. find any. Okay, I cried twice. Really? Okay. Yeah. One of them was when 
because I think the whole thing with with uh, Marcus is that he and his wife seem to not get along. They always have problems. In every film in the series, him and his wife are, are dealing with different issues, largely around not having sex. Yeah. yeah. But the scene that like I found really touching was when, oh man, I didn't even know I was going to bring this up. I have to bring this up. Joey Pants. Oh my God. First off, there were at least two opportunities for a standing ovation, pause <laughs> the movie. Joey we Pants. Screamed. We're like, projectionist, halt the film. Now, um, you know, I think coming off of The Irishman, you know, the, the Al Pacino's now legendary. They're fucking fathers. They're fucking. F-. That, that monologue where he's yeah. screaming. Joey Pants is like two scenes of just <laughs> screaming. Yeah. They're incredible. Uh huh. And the, the ledge fa- scene. Amazing. The, oh my God. And, and him trying to tell a Buddhist koan yeah. to Will Smith at a basketball game that he's screaming at <laughs> is amazing. Yeah. They really look. Here's the big spoiler. You ready? Y'all ready? Y'all ready for this? Thank you for giving them time. Maybe they're not ready. Joey for this. Pants gets shot in the fucking neck and dies in Mike Lowry's arms. It's yeah. fucking heartbreaking. It was, uh, a, a daring cinematic move. I don't think. It's good to record just after eating a meal that's going to dredge know. up Jesus every Christ. bit of phlegm in your fucking system. <sighs> Uh, it, it especially after watching like the rise of Skywalker. If JJ had the stones to kill Chewie, yeah, that movie would have gone up a full letter grade. Maybe yeah, I, two. Right, it would have gone from an F I don't care. to like uh, yeah. a C minus. Yeah, it would have been really big. If the, they, if they'd had the, the 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 actual fucking constitution to take a blow that was interesting and compelling. I mean, we've seen, said cojones on this show many times. You can say cojones again. If he had the freaking cojones Thank you. to pull off like an actual surprise like that, I was shocked when Joey Pants gets capped. Me too. And I was like, the worst part is that you don't get to see much. You know that they're sort of friends and colleagues and they've been doing this forever and they know each other. But the moment where he's killed is like, why don't you come over to dinner? You know, like they make fun of his cooking and it's like such a nice moment of humanity. And it's interrupted, so startling. I was like, I lost my breath for a second. It was, it was intense. It was incredible. Yeah. But you alluded to something a moment ago that I really loved, which is that to make these franchises work, as they go on, you need to increase our collective investment in everything that's going on. And this movie, which brings on a whole raft of new characters, mm. I fully engaged with and developed a relationship with all the new characters. But at the end of the day, I was like, it is genuinely a pleasure to spend time with Mike and Marcus. Yeah. Like, at this point, it's like, they're aging naturally with this series, mm-hmm. and this movie is contemplative, it's about family, it's about loss, it's about dealing with the consequences of your actions, which the other movies don't really fully embrace to this degree. Yeah. Like, there's some degree of, like, you know, shit just got real, our families are now involved, etc. But this movie's really all about, like, I'm a grandfather, we're getting older, mm-hmm. we can't keep doing this, and, like... The fact that they like confront that and of course overcome those challenges, of course, because it's a bad boys movie and don't worry, they go and they kill the bad guys. It's great. They go to another country just like in two and they just gun them all down. But in this movie, like, it really reminds you how beautiful their relationship is. Yeah. It, this we've said it before. We might never say it again. So pay attention. This these movies would not work. That is that's what these movies are, and they know that. And that's what these like they spend so much time with them just doing self-maintenance and, ma- and maintaining each other. That's what these movies are about, is like che- like your friends, check they check you. Well, you go back to Shrek, and I think if we were to revisit Shrek, and I think we talked about it at the time, but it's, it's a real thing. The donkey-Shrek relationship gets weird and fraught and yeah. kind of falls apart. Yeah. And it's really a, ma- a massive shortcoming of those movies is that there isn't that core relationship that really works in it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, we, we really latched on to the, the Gingy and Pinocchio. Right, the sidelining of of uh, of Donkey in general. Yeah, that's why those. That's why we really love those characters. I think we didn't really talk about it too much, but that's why things work in movies. Is when, you know, I've talked about the Sorkin problem. Like when Sorkin like well left the West Wing, it got uninteresting because they decided to pit our friends against each other as conflict. And for me, like having friends have problem, like their relationship is, as he said in his wedding speech, weathered. They go through shit together. But at the end of the day, we never really doubt that they're not there for each other. Right. I think one of the most beautiful moments in the movie is when, after his recovery, Will Smith is like plaintively begging with Marcus to join him again in a conquest yeah. for death. Uh-huh. And Marcus is like, no, I'm not going to. Yeah. And, and, and like, yeah. obviously, look, they're all just doing a little dance around the inevitable, which uh-huh. is that Marcus joins him again to yeah. wreak havoc on bad guys. But like, they make that 
they really invest that. And it's two like middle aged men having a real conversation that like, you know, it, it people if the premise of this podcast is to say that that sequels aren't just frivolous cash ins designed to perpetuate a brand, but actually capable of of developing something to the point where you want to take that journey because it's actually going to take you somewhere. This movie gives you all of that. Yeah. It complicates the relationship. It deepens it. It extrapolates on elements we haven't considered yet, like Marcus's Christian faith, which is one of my favorite subplots of the movie. Yeah. It's like a fucking Scorsese movie for yeah, a little it's bit. It's really good. Where he's like praying. That when, when Mike is in the hospital, he's praying to God. Like it, It's like you really, it's not flippant. Like they, they sell the emotional parts and they build the world. Mm-hmm. And I want to talk about the, the, the world building in this. You, yeah. you comfy to dive into that? Well, I just wanted to briefly get, I brought up Joey Pants because I just want to say that like the, there are some touching moments where the relationship between Marcus and his wife are not good, but like there's a, that tender moment where like Marcus is sad and rather than have a scene of them fighting, she just like, it's silent and she just is there for him and you can sort of get a tiny sense of, I feel like the relationship that Marcus and Mike bring, he, Mike, Mike ruins their marriage and he sort of tries to help in the first one, but he is the cause of all these problems and just started to get like a mic free moment of them together was was just like really touching. It really worked, especially after the loss of Joey. Yeah. yeah. Man, that I think about like, you know, the life I see us leading together. Yeah. When we're both negatively impacting our respective relationships yeah. because of our like obsessive need to kill. Mhm. And it's yeah, nice I was to say, get a sense we're, like, we're doing that now, but not because of our need to kill that'll come later you know it's our need to produce quality content yes. in the podcast medium yes okay so i want to talk about the world building here yes, world building one uh we alluded to this earlier marcus is now a grandfather because his daughter has had a child by way of reggie oh. reggie is back <laughs> i was so happy reggie's back he's a marine now uh that call back to bad boys 2 was so fucking sick yeah truly loved that the fact that we're now aging with Reggie, like what? A, what a he looked inspired identical pick! Too. It was crazy. It was like good. it's fucking Reggie right yeah. there. Um, that was delightful. I like that they very tastefully deal with the Gabrielle Union question by having Will Smith allude to breaking up with her, and mm-hmm. and at a very inopportune time. And Marcus, like, why the fuck would you bring that up? Yeah, and it's great. It didn't feel like it felt natural to their relationship that Mike would be insensitive and shitty. And I love that. Uh huh. Yeah, and, it, didn't, it didn't really feel like a oh we should wrap this up for our viewers. It was like it used something that we could have like wanted and had used it in a very nice way i entirely yeah. agree yeah um but more importantly we're really digging into mike here and a lot of his his methodology as, as a human in this movie because like he's, he's he's he almost dies and he's the bulletproof cop who now mm-hmm. has almost died and he has to contend with life after like facing that mortality and yeah. they do a really good job i think examining that but we learned something about mike which is i think the reason sequels are cool is not just deepening our relationship with the characters and letting them grow naturally, but also pulling off fucking wacky bullshit that you just want to drink up like a sweet, sweet nectar. Mm. And they're like, Mike's only been in love one time, and the person he in love was in love with was a cartel, fucking death obsessed, Satan worshiping <laughs> witch woman who with whom he fathered a child who's very handsome and lethal, just like his cool father. Yeah, and that is like the kind of bullshit where it's like. They do a lot of great cutting back in this movie where Mike is out, you know, busting the bad guys and inter- viciously beating DJ Khaled to learn things about <laughs> this this circle of assassinations. Did you see his, his credit? Yeah, Did you know executive. His, do you know his name, though? Well, not when he showed head. up in the opening credits, it said Khaled. How, how do you say it? Khaled. Khaled. Quote, DJ Khaled. End quote, Khaled. Really? His name is Khaled Khaled. With, with Khaled in the middle. DJ Khaled in the middle. Oh, good for him. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, it's really great. Mazel tov. Um, okay. Khaled, you know what they say. Everything comes in threes. No exception for Khaled. Khaled, Khaled, Khaled. Um, so while Mike is out putting on his fucking baller outfits and being a badass and shit, Mark is enjoying the the, the, the retired life and throwing on his fucking his, his robe and, and listening to his books on yeah. t- his like meditations on tape and burning his incense. I love that back and forth. It was really yeah. fucking delightful. It was so good. And I like that, like, while in this movie, you know... Mike doubles down on the fact that he is the father to a cartel witch's bastard son. Marcus is like contending with like being like a, a stay at home grandpa who watches telenovelas and like mm-hmm. runs errands. I just love that. that, that these are both storylines that are both equally engrossing and delightful to experience. Yeah. Well, I mean, and it all comes through those two actors. They, there's a reason why Will Smith was doing his thing and Martin Lawrence. 
I think less so in movies. I don't really remember him being as big ever, but he's, he's perfect at this character. Well, I mean, Will Smith is is one of the few like unparalleled yeah. pop culture sensations. I mean, yeah. music, television, film, the stage, maybe someday. Oh, you can only hope. So I want to bring up, uh, you were talking about Will Smith here for a minute. Yeah. Did this movie remind you of any uh-huh. other movies? Yep. Okay. Sure did. Um, this, this is really fascinating. This is really uncannily similar to Gemini Man. Yeah. This movie is all about Will Smith fighting a younger, better looking, stronger version of himself yeah. and contending with his past and the role that his identity as a agent of violence has played. And the fact that this so closely parallels Gemini Man so soon after that film was released is a little uncanny, and and I, I'm fascinated by it. It's a wonderful thing to tease out. Yeah, I'd love to know if they were influenced by it at all. It seems unlikely, just given how long it takes to make a movie, and like they wouldn't really be doing that. But it is so weird. It's like, this could be one of the, you know, Armageddon Deep Impact, Volcano, Dante's Peak. You know, we got Gemini Man and... And uh, Bad Boys for Life. A classic example of parallel thinking. Yeah. What does it mean to unpack an aging Will Smith? Yeah. So you got volcanoes. We got asteroids. We yeah, got freaking a, goddamn got the Fresh Prince of Bel Air. But, but I'm saying that, that's the thing about these people that, that, that we build up in society. They become these like novels that deserve explication and commentary and analysis. And I, I think we, I would want to see a third to fourth movie unpacking the cultural impact of like Will Smith and the life that he's led. Sure. And of course, in reality, you know, he's like a family man. Yeah. In reality, he's like you know famous for being a father and a husband as much. He, so he's not quite the scallywag and rogue that he plays in the films. No, that's why but, he's an actor, Josh. Uh, you know, the thing about acting, they yeah, just they, they got to find scallywags and rogues. Well, they pretend really hard to be someone who's not real. Is that okay? You just kick the. It's thing. fine. Yeah. Okay. Don't worry about it. I'm the engineer. Uh, is, so you're now an engineer. This is not a new thing. But you're, just you're the editor, and uh, oh, can I be an engineer? I'm a. No. Pop- you're I'm running the tech. I'm running the hardware. It's not pre-engineering, you fucking turd. I mean, I could do this. No, you really couldn't. <laughs> Tell me how the mixer works. Look at it. Look, you just plug in the mics there. Yeah. And then each of these rows represents each of those ins. Listener, pull out a pad and paper. You got an out? Yeah. That goes to that machine, which records There's it. a lot of outs. How yeah. do you record it? How do you get it all set? I could do it. I'll do the next one. No, you fucking won't. That's right, because that's your job. Thank I won't you. will take away your job just letting you know that... You're an engineer, I'm an engineer. No, you're an editor and the web engineer. Yes, yeah, see, an engineer. A web engineer. Look, I fucking do all the graphic design, all the video editing. You think that's not engineering? You know, we were talking in the car, Who, like, when are we more Mike, when are we more Marcus? You're being a real Marcus right now. Up. I'm kind of miking all over you. Yeah, you are, but you don't deserve to be miking all over me. My well, point, I'm Marcusing because I'm Mike. I'm sorry, unpack that? I'm Marcusing because I'm Mike. You're doing a Mike move by choosing to Marcus? No, no, I'm doing a Marcus move because I feel like my mic is being taken from me. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. I'm, I, but, I, I'm resorting on, that, that's to Marcus. That, that's a false dichotomy. You're saying that like the presence of a mic negates the existence of a Marcus. There's a mic and a Marcus inside all of us. Is there? I really think so. Well, there isn't a Marcus in, in the mic. There think? is there is a little bit of Marcus in the mic. Yeah, that the, the whole yeah. exchange, right? The baby, they scared a baby. I love it. He's scared Will of Smith's baby. like I could never raise a, a baby, and in real life, he's like, you know. yeah, I like that. Yeah. He raised Jaden Smith. He clearly is good at raising kids. Yeah. You think Willow's gonna ever do another song? I whip my hair back and forth. I whip my hair back and forth. Remember when that happened? No. Who's Willow? Willow Smith, his daughter, had a no. had a pop hit years ago. Really? I whip my hair back and forth. I whip my hair back and forth. It's it You're slaps. Saying, yeah. That's the chorus. It's the hook. Yeah, I know. You I'm going to do the fucking whole verse so I can pull it up. No, do it from memory, please. I don't know how bad it goes. Bad boys, bad boys, boys. what you going to do? Oh, I have, so a, talk to me, wait, I have to talk to you about something. Please bring it up. I'm pretty sure all of our listeners don't trust us anymore because in, I think, episode one of the bad boy verse, we sort of talked about the song and we didn't really understand the song. Yeah. So I listened to it and I think what we were thinking was this. Bad boys, bad boys, what you're going to do, uh-huh. what you're going to do when they come for you. So we were thinking it was bad boys, comma, bad boys, colon. So like, what you're going to do... I'm going to up the lyrics. So it's what you're going to do when they come for you. We were thinking it's like, what do you... Th- what We were thinking they, bad boys was the antecedent of they. Okay. I'm pretty sure, after doing the tiniest of bit of research... Wow, you're so engrossed in your phone that you missed the cue. Doing the tiniest bit of research. Yeah, ticket, 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 ticket. Jesus whatever. Christ. Bad boys, bad boys. Uh, what you gonna do? We, I think it's 
talking to bad boys, they refers to the well, unspoken I'm, antecedent of I'm going of to the unveil, I'm gonna, finally, in episode three of the, of the well, Bad no, Boys. I verse. brought it up. Bad boys, what you want, what you want, what you're going to do when Sheriff John Brown come for you. Exactly. Tell me what you're going to want to do, what you're going to do. Yeah, yeah. Bad boys, bad boys. A lot of that. When you were eight and you had bad traits, you go to school and learn the golden rules. Why are you acting like a bloody fool? Sorry for the language. That's all right. And if you get hot, you must it. get cool. Bad boys, okay. Yeah, they just want to chuck it on that one. Yeah, you chuck it on this one. You chuck it on your brother. You chuck it on your father. You chuck it on your brother. You chuck it on your sister. You chuck it on that one and you chuck it on me. Bad yeah. boys, bad boys. So we've learned that Okay, this... hold on. Nobody nog give you no break. Police nog give you no break. Soldier nog give you no break. Not even you. Uh I didn't Idrin nog gonna give you no break, hee <laughs> hee. That's good. <laughs> Why you have to act so mean? Don't you know you're a human being? Are you talking to me? Born of a mother with the love of a father. Well, I mean, hey, that's what this movie's all about. Yeah. Maybe Will Smith's uh, bastard son had more of a father for you figure. So I just wanted to come out there. Reflections come and reflections go. Like in the movie when he tackles his son, like in Gemini Man, and they both look into the fractured mirror. Yeah, that's that, good stuff. That shot ruled. I know sometimes you want to let go. He he he. Why I know he sometimes you want to let go. He he he. It's in the song. He he he. Chuck, then, then they do like the refrain and the chucking it again after that, a couple, like yeah. a bunch. So I just wanted and that's to uh, inner circle. The come song out is my there. Inner circle. Isn't the name of the song "Bad Boys" and then in brackets "Cops" theme? I believe this was written for the show. No, I don't think it was. Why does Inner it... Circle Tech? This album's from 1987. Okay, never mind that. But I, I thought for some, I've it's listened, Inner Circle. I know it is, but I listened to one version, and in the song title, it said "Bad Boys," and then in brackets, "Cops Theme." I think there's another cut of it for the so show. There must be a cut of it for the show. But anyway, I think we were wrong. I think it is exactly about not that the cops are bad boys, but that's interesting that cops sort of like as we did misidentified the bad boys in the song and took that as a persona of being a bad boy. Maybe they're trapped in their own idea of like the the authority figure that they're supposed to be. Right. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they often opt into the act of being a bad boy. Right. The semiotics of this are fascinating. I love it. Yeah. So I, I, at first we were confused, and but this is like you take a little time, you do a little research, and you get to the bottom of a thing. Right. I learned that in middle school, I learned it in high school, I learned it in college the first time, I learned it in college the second time. And this movie is about... learned in college the third time. Yeah. You do a little research, and you'll learn something. But they're not... This is all about the struggle to not entirely be bad boys. Exactly. Which is why it's a fascinating movie. Because, like, Marcus's, like, desperate pleas to some sort of, like, theological guidance makes it clear that he's looking for any pathway out of this hellhole that he's found himself in. You know, I... The the, the therapy jokes are, like, it's kind of... It's a Yeah, no, it's not even a joke. Right. I mean, it was a joke, but he's like, no, I'm going to need therapy. Yeah, Thank you. you. Like I really it's, will. It's bad to hurt people, and it makes me feel bad. Yeah, I love that. And who character. are we talking about? we got we got to bring in the new cast of characters, the uh, Ammo, got, Ammo Squad. So we got, as you said, a raft of characters. I've been really into using the word raft in that manner lately. Yeah. I think the image is really nice. Yeah, like I'm imagining the Ammo Squad and the new villains. And they're come. lashed to a little wooden... sort of like a fog. Mm, and and it's dark now and we're standing on a beach. The two and you and like me. a raft drifting. You, me, Michael Bay, and the brothers who directed this movie. Mm, uh, Michael Bay's barely involved in I this. know, but he was in it. He was, he was in it. He had he, great hair. He, was, he looked fucking great. <laughs> and they're like, all right, boys, it's coming. And we're like, what? What papas? Because we're going all three. They're not the brothers who directed this, you fucking racist. I thought you said they were twins. No, no one said that. He said it. Bilal Fala and Adil El Arbi. I have no idea. For some reason, maybe I wasn't paying attention to you. For some, I thought you said they were twin brothers. No one's. No one said that. All right, fine. Someone uh, fucking roll the tape back. Well, I will, because I'm the editor, so I have to listen to all this shit <sighs> many times. Yes, but go ahead. So we're introduced like a new yeah, hip so they young come squad. On to the beach and whatever. We get to meet them all. Yeah, but we yeah, get it. Whatever. Quit with the fucking, fucking this metaphor shit. You, you take a big step forward in knowing when to bail out. Much like on a raft. Because if that shit's going down, you got to get off the raft. Yeah, but you could also see it as well, maybe if we just all came together and fixed this thing, the raft would continue and we could continue on our journey. Is the raft America? And are you Bernald Sanders? Mm, Bernald. Mm. Bernald J. Sanders. Really? Bernald J. Sanders. Yeah, it's Bernald J. Sanders. Cool. Famously. Wow, I'm gonna vote. I'm gonna write. I'm not gonna check off the Bernie box. You're gonna write in. I'm gonna write Bernald, in Bernald. Hey, if you're J. listening Sanders. and you want to make change in this country, yeah. write in Bernald J. Sanders. Yeah, as a write in. Because it write-in. will go back to Bernie, but you just want to make sure it's the right. What is what is the name that's actually gonna be on there? I'm sure Bernard, Bernard Sanders. Madam Bernard Sanders. I said I'm sure, not Madam. <laughs> 
Good, but good for him. If he wants to go by Madame Bernard Sanders, yeah. it's 2020, I want baby. To go by Ber- Madame Bernard. Great. That sounds fun. Your drag persona is congealing more and more every day. Yeah. It's <laughs> just really vague. It's good. You can burn old. You can use burn old if you want. <laughs> Thank you. Right. So we meet a, 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 the young, attractive, new gang of bad uh-huh. boys who, you know, this is where the movie gets a little sort of like. To bring up the boilerplate phrase again, it, this is a little mustache-y. sort of a little mushy, a little mustache. Like there's a new super cop gang, and they have their own thing. Where their thing is just doing bad boys business specifically. I disagree. Okay. I totally disagree. I mean, I'm not complaining. I no, enjoyed but I it. I bought every moment of it because that's it. They've been out of the game for 20 years, and no, they haven't. I mean, but like they're old school. They've been they were doing shit before drones, before all this computer shit, and now these young kids have all these non lethal ways to solve problems. It's yes. fucking disgusting. No, that scene where he's like, the bag's empty. We got to go in there and save our the guy, yeah. and then he just ends up killing him because right. honestly, he probably would have escaped. Mm-hmm. So that scene was really great, and every time he's doing something, his brutal, gross, awful way. Mike, use fucking names. Sorry, I use a lot of pronouns. Yeah, uh, ammo shows up. Doing it a different way. So the scene where you go, they go to the accountant. Because Marcus keeps calling him in. It's great. I love it. Well, that's not even true. At, oh, yeah, no, Marcus wait. calls him Did in. Marcus call him in when the they go first to the time accountant? When they raid Mexico, much like the, finale, right. the Cuba-based finale of Bad Boys 2, yeah. they choose to come. Again, much like in Bad Boys 2. But they find out, uh, Ammo finds out about uh, Booker, whatever his name was, without their help. That's true. Yeah. And I, I maybe I missed it. Who's the accountant who handles... The money involved in the, ex- the arms exchange. No, that was the arms dealer, and they oh, also. They, f- yeah. I'm pretty sure they found out about the accountant too, without their help. So I, I just like that they're working in conjunction. It's nice, but Two it's showing streams. Mike that yeah, you can go beat someone up with a meat tenderizer, or you can work as a team, and you all have really good powers, and you can use computers and drones and the all DJ these things. college scene was scary to me because like I know it's like a movie, but like it's scary to think that someone might disable DJ Khaled to make beats and bring together artists and pork so and, make- and for that matter pork i do like pork so i think that the idea that we're threatening that even in a movie there's a like, weird <laughs> you know yeah, i looked over to you you were blanched i was sweating bullets yeah you're like wait no pork i was like no those are money wait, makers. Wait, 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 no pork no hold on hold the phone no pork <laughs> did you like that weird very strange vegan joke it was great it was so strange because even veganism is definitely big enough that it's now in mainstream popular movies. As like, but, a, but Mike is suggesting that DJ Khaled, the butcher, <laughs> must have a side hustle yes, because, because vegans have so injured the 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 fucking meat industry. I I don't know if we're there yet <laughs> in a culture that is probably one of the more meat based cultures in America. I would say Miami has no shortage of meat. Yeah. That's it's going to be centuries before veganism fully takes over. I have eaten, and I'll a, be there. I've eaten a vegan cubano, but I, you know, I don't think most cubanos want to be vegan. Yeah. The sandwiches themselves, they would prefer to be done. Oh yeah, a slab of yes. ham. Please make sure the sandwich mustard yeah. pickles. It's a great sandwich. Portuguese it's bread. Yeah, great it's sandwich. Good. But you can make it vegan. Yeah, yeah. I've had it vegan. I'm yeah, just supposed yeah, to. Had it vegan, dude. We've all fucking. Had, everyone fucking listens. Had a fucking. Look, vegan. if you had a fucking cubano, yeah, vegan, 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 if you haven't had a cubano that's vegan, yeah. I'm not talking to you. I know you have. I have. We established this. If you out there, just try it. Live a little. I work Live with a the, little. I work with these numb nuts. I'm going to say it. Numb nuts. Fuck. We're like, oh, that's vegan? Puh. Don't want it. No, thanks. Oh. It's like, you get what? Just try it. Maybe meat doesn't matter when you're slathering it with mustard, mm-hmm. covering it with pickles. Isn't slather like a delightful verb? Especially with mustard. Yeah. Slathering is great. It's not good with wax. Mm. I, Amy waxed my chest the other day. You sent me a video I of it. I sent you a picture, yeah. yeah. I was like, boy, this guy sure loves the 40-year-old virgin starring Steve Carell. Uh, it didn't work. It's very hard to do. And slathering on like not quite uh, liquid wax is more painful than the waxing. It sucked. Okay, can I read a review from uh, B Hernandez 2216 from please, IMDb? Please, please. 10 please. out of 10 stars. Wait, this is for... Already, Bad Boys for Life. Ride together, out. die together. Colon, Bad Boys for Life. And that's in quotes. Bad Boys for Life is an incredible action-packed comedy to enjoy with the whole audience who wanted the new Bad Boys movie. That's true. That's extremely I agree accurate. With you that's so just far. good what, reporting. What's this person's name? Uh, B. Hernandez, 2216. Okay. It's more action-packed than the second. Mm, arguable. But I do have an observation about We're the action. We're going to talk about yeah. that after this. I, I don't think that that's true. Yeah. And it's hilariously funny. Agreed. Oh, agreed. Funniest of the funniest of the franchise. So I think far. so. Will Smith and Martin Lawrence are back together, and they nailed their main characters again. 
Agreed. And as we said, if they didn't. Wait, did you write this? Shut up. Vanessa Hudgens, Vanessa, Vanessa Hudgens did pretty good working with the main cast members, and she's hot. It's true. All right, Brian, maybe keep it, maybe keep it to the professional Wait, stuff. Brian? Brian Hernan well, I'm assuming his name is Brian. Why are you <laughs> what? I'm building out a life for Brian. <laughs> he loves Vanessa Hudgens. He's watched her since she was in high it school musical. It could be Beatrice. Be Escher, Beatrice Hernandez. And it's a good thing that I never forget this quote from the second film. Ah. We ride together, we die together. Bad boys for life. Yeah, they do also so say it in forget. this movie like eight times. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so talking about the action for a minute, here's something really interesting to me. We've often talked about the like the barely controlled, chaotic hell that Michael Bay turns every action scene yeah. into. His deliberate approach to shatter a perspective, to have no continuity, to make every gunfight just feel like you are about to be shot wherever you're mm-hmm. sitting. Doesn't matter where you are, because... The physics of that world are not real. I think you nailed it. That is why it works so well because you discombobulates you so much that you feel like you're in danger. Right. Yeah. It's like genuinely frenetic and upsetting. This movie is a lot more smooth mm-hmm. and even toned, and I don't. I don't know. It's like very confidently directed. I feel like because sometimes yeah. people are very precious with these kind of properties, but I would say these are probably the best action scenes. As far as like actually making what most people would consider a coherent, well-directed, non-clusterfuck action scene, these they're more conventional than a Bay action scene. Mm-hmm. But like, for example, the fight I think when when Will Smith fights, who we find out to be his son on the rooftop, that fight is awesome. That was a good scene. It's really good, mm-hmm. and it's it's just certainly not the movie. This is it's very very different. Yeah, from a Bay production. I'm going to I'm going to disagree. I think this is for, so far my least favorite in terms of action. And I think that's because Bay really realized that if you do it to the extreme, viewers don't care. At that point all I want is more. And when you are limited by making a coherent action sequence, it drops everything down because there's no way to have like 17 people shooting at each other because it just wouldn't work. So yeah, I just think Bay really figured out that he's he maxes everything out. And to do that, you have to fuck around with it so that reality is non-existent. And this was very grounded. Like, the camera work was much smoother. I missed the cuts. I missed the craziness. I missed the wanton violence. So yeah, I would say this was, yeah, maybe the more, most controlled. But I think as I've I've sort of learned to love the Bay, the Bay touch. Well, I mean, Bad Boys 2, like, bludge... Bad Boys 1 coasts on charm alone. Yeah. Like, everything about it is just delightful. Yeah. From the setting to the performances, like, it's just, you know, the plot is pretty whatever, which is fine. It's a hindrance to, it would be, it would really shatter these movies. This one, I think, is the most complex plot of any of them, and even mm-hmm. then, they keep it pretty, like, personal, and it doesn't get too in the way of the of the fun of just being in the zone. Bad Boys 2 bludgeons you into submission, which is the magic of it, because, again, that one jumps a half hour longer than the first one, and yet... It's a thrill to watch. It's so fucking crazy yeah. constantly. And this one, I thought, again, way more mellow. Uh, the, the, you really you stay in things longer than any of the preceding two movies. And I don't know. I, I'm, I guess I'm, I'm with you. Maybe it's not fair to judge them head to head. Because I think, too, that insane chase sequence with Is... the corpses and the cars, and yeah. that's really fucking majestic. And and this one doesn't really ever get full batshit like that, right. which is like, impressive. For me, it's they, still pretty... they drove by a truck carrying 100 pipes, and they already shot a car off a car. I was like, oh, fuck, they're going to shoot these pipes off, and it's going to be fucking great. They didn't shoot the pipes off. That's like, true. Why would you even tease me like that? Well, I do like that we got a, a, a good old fashioned impaling in this movie. That was cool. That scene was good. Yeah, yeah. Because that's like a gunfight where you can sort of figure out what's going on. Like you can. But I still understand. think it would have been better. <laughs> I think it would have been better if I couldn't understand what was going on. Yeah. I think Michael Bay has taught me now that I'm an adult and just not dismissing things that I think are stupid. Uh, I I think he's taught me that that is the height of action is when you are so ecstatic. Like, it's just like God's giving you action. Well, I was like, after trudging through 1917... Right. I maybe wanted a dose of full Bay fucking, you know, and I who think gives a shit. Like, some that, of those scenes work, so, but yeah. the scenes in 1917 that worked for me was like when there, when there aren't any enemies around, when they're like going through the the initial one where they're going through the trench. That scene really worked for me. Yeah. Um, and at the end when he's running away and the lights are like... It's that works because it is he's Deacons is very good at controlling space and you never feel lost, but it's also not really about 
the mania and claustrophobia and well, I guess about but like the mania and and just like brutality of war. It is so much more about the like confined spaces and feeling like you're on a track. So maybe the hyper realism of the disjointed nightmare Bay universe actually captures like the horror of being in a gun battle. Yes, that's what I was saying. Like yeah. it's so. It is so overwhelming and discombobulating that you're like, you actually feel like you're a part of this thing where things are happening all around you. You cannot, if you were in a gunfight, know that there were seven people on this part of the room and know where everything is going on. Bay's a genius. I will say I'm that. I'm coming out full Bay genius. That insane arcing spinning shot from the second one, too. Can I say one thing? In, in, please. Bay, Bay. Ugh. Can I say that again? In case I, you missed I'd it? I'd rather you don't. Bay, Bay. And I'm not just saying baby, but I could say Bay, baby, Bay. It sounds like a nice song from the 60s. Baby, 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 baby. Baby, baby. Yeah. Michael Bay. Baby. Baby, baby. Three, four. Michael Bay. Baby. Baby. Um, I don't want to take the wind out of my ear. The old sales there I did really it. depressed me with Bay is Bay. Uh, Bay's Bay. Bay's Bay. He it was so lovely that he was in this movie. I, I love that he shows up as the master of ceremonies. It so did you great. read anything about like why he wasn't really involved in this? It seems like something that he'd want to do. Well, he's producing four. Yeah. I don't I don't have a lot of I don't I, I don't have any research. It's so weird. Because this was his baby. Bay Bay. <laughs> this was his literal baby. Yeah. This was his first movie. Yeah. So it got him on the map, and yet he chooses to not really piece in it. It's just really strange that he wouldn't want to be here for this. I don't think he didn't want to. I just think it's the reality of the biz, baby. I mean, this got like kicked down the road. He wasn't even the original director, so like he wasn't ever going to direct this. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. It's like it's just, I, I'm just curious how he feels. I think it's also okay for Michael Bay to like be like, you know what? We're this is what twenty five years into this movie series. I don't need to make every one of them. I know that's an interesting with franchise. I for me, I just feel like sort of the anti Will Smith where like you didn't know you had a baby and suddenly 20 years later you're like oh shit I got a baby here it's like he's had a baby and he's been taking care of it for 26 years and then someone else is like oh wait no I'm actually that's my baby he's like what that's my baby are you drawing a parallel between Mike Lowry's experience with fostering uh, with, with having a child he didn't know existed uh-huh. with Michael Bay handing over the reins of the bad boys franchise to what the fuck man what I'm going to take you to Mexico City and kill you in a big fucking hotel. <laughs> Why don't you just do it right here? I don't know. It's your basement. I feel bad. You know, you wouldn't feel your, bad. Your loved ones have to clean up the basement. You could throw me in the thing like they did. That in, was so sick. That okay, was sick. let's go back to the beginning of the movie. There's a fucking prison breakout that rules. They don't belabor it. It's so awesome. Mm-hmm. The aforementioned Mexican cartel witch nightmare lady stages a prison riot where a, a fucking guard gets the shit shanked out of her. Heavy shanking. Shank, shank, shank. Shank, 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 shank. The knife fork in this movie, that scene where her, their son, Michael Bay, and Michael Bay, fuck, Mike Lowry. Yeah. And the witch, his son, also knows how to use his knife. Yeah. That scene ruled too. And then we just came off of watching Scary Movie, which has some incre- exceptional knife work. Knife work. Oh, So we God. were really kind of like in a knifey zone right now. We thought we might lose it going from doing uh, Bad Boys Scary movie bad boys, but, but that here's knife, the thread. The knife work bridge. Knife work. Fuck. Yeah. You're gonna hear about it next week. Get, All we talk about is the knife. Get work. ready. Knife city, baby. We talk about a piano once too. Yeah, freaking piano. <laughs> um Yeah, I mean, okay, so let me ask the obvious question. Where you know, this movie tees up a sequel so aggressively at the end of the movie with a bravado that is so charming, where, you know, Will Smith's son having realized, you know, that he's led a life of of doing wrong as like a Mexican super cartel assassin who is awesome. He's sick. He's very attractive. Yeah. He's very good at action. Mm-hmm. Great Everything haircut. This is cool. I love that haircut. I could not pull that great. off, but I love it. You would look insane. <laughs> well, with the, the fade on the side. Yeah, with the, and like, the harsh line the and harsh, the other yeah, lines. You would look like a Nazi. Yeah. No, I wouldn't. Or like Nazi adjacent. Okay, I'll take it. Okay. Um, so so he basically, at the end of the movie, he's like locked up in a, bill, a big uh, Hannibal Lecter style cell in like an empty room, which I mm-hmm. always love in movies. Yeah, that's really good. And Will Smith's like, Are those- hey son, how you doing? He's like, I'm paying my debt. Yeah. You know, like this is a fucking good ass conversation. <laughs> and then Will Smith's like, I found a way to pay that debt a little quicker. You down? And his son's like, fuck yeah. Or of course whatever. I'm down. Of course, yeah. And uh, yeah, if four is Martin Lawrence is done and or, or it takes, it takes a back seat to Will Smith's son, 
I'm all about it. I'm, I'm, yeah. there's, there's a lot of ways they can play this going into the future. But, like, man, I'm just very ready. I'm, I really loved watching this. And again, we watched it with two people who had not been as immersed in the series as we had been. Yeah. And they left with smiles the size of saucer plates. Yeah. We had saucer plates with them. We held them up. We held them up. I, we held You're them like, up. Smile. Saucer plate. Smile. Saucer plate. We took a photo. We measured the two. Same size. Same goddamn size. So if you want saucer plate smiles... Go freaking see Bad Boys for life. Yeah. You don't even have to have seen the other two, I guess. But I it really like, helps. Yeah. I, 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 I think it works, but as we've, as we've realized, the franchise is building to this. Yeah. You can drop in, I guess, and sort of get a sense of what's going on, but without the one, two, three... It's just like it's this thing is growing, right? I think being able to appreciate it, having seen the first two again, like we're talking about what this whole goddamn podcast is all about, and you invest in these things, they sometimes pay out like a slot machine. Sure, I mean I haven't I haven't gotten rich on this, but I liked it, and I want to go back to what I said in the lobby of the AMC in that weird shopping area that we always go to. Yeah, I think next to Maze Runner, this is the most consistent trilogy we've watched so far. Where I really enjoyed each movie, and they all fed into each other to deliver something satisfying that felt like a progression and a development. Where there wasn't this like second movie fatigue, where things take a weird mm-hmm. turn, where the third movie doesn't get lost in its own mythos. It really actually pulls off some shit that's really impressive. Yeah, I'm not pausing because I disagree with you. I'm pausing because I might think it's better than. Oh, it, it totally is. The Maze Runner movies are so ultimately generic that it's more like a very well executed. It's just like. This was just fun to watch because it's well made and it you know teen dystopia. What it's just mm-hmm. that served up perfectly. What and, if you if Will Smith were in? If they had cast Will Smith as the main character in Maze Runner, I think in a little bit he'll Martin be the Lawrence. ultimate stunt casting. Like when he gets to that point in his career where he's like kind of not acting very much and chilling yeah. out a little bit. It's been a crazy couple of years for Will Smith. Mm-hmm. I mean between you know the Gemini Man and this. And let me say this: unlike Gemini Man, this movie is a smash. It is doing really well. Yeah, and it's actually really cool that it came out so quickly because we can see that, oh, they're both sort of about a person that's feeling like he's he's getting to a place where he doesn't want to be and he's haunted by things that have happened in his past. And, and, oh, and, wait, and he has a younger version of himself to oh, actually wait, here's try to... This, like, yeah, literalized person who represents all of that. Mm. And this, I think, does it better. Well, I mean, I, again, like... Going back to the top here, the fact that this movie is so invested in interrogating a legacy of violence, even though that's ultimately set aside for more brutal ass kicking and murder. They do it so well. I, I love that that shows you what this series is. They can raise those questions and take you to that place and show you the tortured nature of Mike's life more so in this movie than any of the other movies. Because mm-hmm. he's like a lonely man who's confronting the fact that his love is lost, his son has grown up into a killer just like him. Yeah. Like, it's it's good stuff. And then go right back into the fucking wanton carnage, and you're like, fuck yeah. You know what this, I also really liked? What at? I liked that you were talking earlier about uh, Marcus's re- re- Christianity was really brought forward in this movie. Mm. Uh, but what I also really liked was that they kept cross-cutting between him praying for Mike to survive and then the witch summoning him to be back alive. Yeah. So it's also showing the same way that the forces of good and evil are really the same. They both really want the same things. It's very complicated. It's not that like God is the good white bearded man and and the devil witch character is they they both want the same things. And it's just a very complicated relationship between what's good, what's bad, what, what is violence, what is peace. It's just a journey. We're on this fucking journey. This is beautiful. Fucking just rap on that a little bit. Yeah. Oh, I just did. Okay, that's good. Yeah, no, I, again, like, I love that, you know, the, the good and evil inside the bad boys mm-hmm. has never been more clearly stated than this installment. Yeah. Well, see, that's, this is the thing where they, this is why we all confuse this song, because everyone confuses the song. Because when Marcus is like, we were bad boys then. What if we're good men now? And then Will Smith goes, no one wants to sing that song. Good man, good man, but it's still bad. It's bad boys, bad boys. What you gonna do? What you gonna do when good men come for you? So they are really taking on the the persona of the bad boys. It's interesting how the cops are sort of fucking dumb and just like killing people. Well, okay, we've brought up this in the past. Like, do you think you know? It, like, is this just fascist propaganda? The ongoing conversation about bad boys. I think this one is probably the most because this one. Amy in the movie was like, I can't buy that. Like, this is the police? Look at this. And I'm like, yeah, this is the fucking police. They're militarized. And I think this is this is the closest it gets to being like, 
in before is these crazy assholes that are going against police protocol, murdering people. Here it's like, wait, if we do it right and we spy on people and we use drones and we like do everything behind the scenes, we're still a poli- like this is the most that like oh look look how cool a police state is. So, That's a yeah, good point. Yeah, yeah. This one like I still think Marcus and Mike are like very personable and are much more about like the this is not cop porn. This is like about how violence is crazy. That whole side was like, wait, but if we do it right, cops are okay. Well, in the role of Rita, you have like the girl boss cop who's like, yeah. you know, you know, what if a girl boss president nuked Iran? Like that that whole like idea of right. like, you know, the, the, the liberal inclusion where it's like, cops can be gay and black too. Yeah. And still fucking be cops and do copy shit. And, and Reggie's a fucking yeah. Marine. And like, so yeah. I think this one is the- They're still beating the old drum. Yeah. Beating the old drum. And this one has like an actual like cop funeral, which I- I fucking hate those scenes yeah. in movies. Hey, when you shoot a rifle straight yeah. up in the air, these are shotguns. Doesn't that shit go right back down? <laughs> Am I nuts? Well, like, yeah, what happens? It, it just float around on the wind. They come down like it's like a little pellet rain later or something. I yeah, don't know. that's Probably crazy. Killing babies somewhere in, in the other side of the cemetery. Wow. I think that'd be reported on, right? If like every cop funeral took out like a <laughs> handful of toddlers. <laughs> no, that's the cop propaganda. Wow. The, the cop of prop cop. Cold, I'll get it. Copaganda. So I think that the whole thing is that we're being, we're, we are being lulled into this, like, you know, to service of the police state in these movies. Because, like, we're so invested in these, in the trials and travails of these very human characters as they, like, behave like monstrous god humans in their pursuit of what they call justice. But in reality, it's just, like, ceaseless murder. But I think under the hand of Bay, like, the first one, I don't even think gets there because it's, like, Joey Pants and the two bad boys are, like, they're so fucking bad at their jobs that they're about to get shut down. Yeah. So everything you're doing is a desperate oh, attempt. I mean, ammo gets shut down in this one, which is great. I love it. Yeah. I think it, 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 did it happen in two? Did anything get shut down in two? Damn it. I guess no. kind of because they can't pursue, they can't go to Cuba, so they like go illegal off the grid. Yeah. With all this like fucking white. like goddamn DEA special like Marine SEAL shit. Oh my God. These yeah, but the crazy. only reason why ammo gets shut down is that they're under the influence of the bad boys. Right. They want to do it. They want to be good cops, but in a just, way like just spy yeah. on everybody. It's kind of like being at the heart of like this like murder cabal because even even the cops are like, "Holy shit, you guys got to stop this!" <laughs> even like the top cops who you know in, in most movies like the Serpico model of the seventies is like, "Yeah, but the top, you know, it's all that the corruption goes to the very top." And yeah. this one, the top is like, no, "Holy stop. shit, guys, Please, what the stop. fuck are you doing?" Yeah, so I think this was who knows who knows how. I read an article on some website. Don't ask me which one. I'm going to guess it was Yahoo.com. Okay. I read an article on Yahoo.com about how, like, the CIA and U.S. Army actually, like, make changes to the last 50 years of cinema. Absolutely. Yeah. And I could definitely see, like, like if I think Bay and Brooke, like, that was, the 90s were a very crazy time to be making movies. It seemed like a lot more was getting just, like, thrown together and put out there. It was a lot smaller feeling. And this, I feel like... You think I, the films of the 90s felt small? Like, the, you know, the, like... I mean, the unnamed... The, the, you can't say the name anymore, but, like, the Weinstein Company or whatever. Miramax. Fuck, I just said it. Fuck. They produced a scary movie. We didn't mention that. <laughs> yeah. Stay tuned for that. <laughs> well, we won't mention it. It's cut already, it It's already... Ha- yeah. Okay, cut it. Yeah. Cut it. <laughs> Put it at the beginning and the end. Great. Yeah. Yeah, perfect. Um, but I just think now, like, to get to hit screens, like this budget was huge, probably. Like when that much money is getting in there, uh, I can't imagine that the police aren't getting really getting involved. In, like the police lobbies and the military is being like, "All right, just don't show that." Well, they probably, they probably have advisors on the movie who like, yeah. are like, "Is this realistic?" It's I just feel like maybe it's I'm totally wrong, but I feel like the slap, like everything's felt like just so like much more natural back in the '90s and just like much less controlled. I think. I'm reading here the budget was $90 million, which is a lot of money. It's a lot of money. Box office, this is one far, one, so far uh, over $100 million. That's good. That's good. They're going to be in good shape. I can sleep easy. <laughs> yeah, Josh is uh, getting a little chewing on his fingernails. Nah, 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 like nah, the nah. day's coming up. He's like, oh, God. Oh, they I actually shot it. a lot of this in the Mexico City. That's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it looks like it. Yeah. That was the Mexico City skyline. Okay, in 2008, Michael Bay said he might direct Bad Boys 3, but the greatest obstacle to the potential sequel would be the cost. 
Because him and Will Smith, some of the highest salaries in the whole industry. <sighs> that makes sense. Okay, so in 2009, the first script was written. In 2011, Martin Lawrence, this is like a running bit where Martin Lawrence reassures the public that this is happening. Mm-hmm. In 2011, Martin Lawrence is like, it's going to happen. In 2014, another screenwriter came on board. Again, two months later, Martin Lawrence says the script has been written and parts have been cast. By June 2015, they got one director. He bails out. This is a tortured history. Yeah. It was going to come out in January 2018. And they, they booked it. They, they got rid of it because they didn't want to compete with Wonder Woman. And then they retitled Bad Boys for Life. <sighs> Filming started in, in, in 2017. Then it was delayed again another year. This is such a crazy story. Holy shit. Then Martin Lawrence in, in August 2017 said it wasn't going to happen. Whoa, Marcus. And then they're like, nope, back on board, baby. I didn't follow any of this because we weren't we weren't in the Bad Boy for yet. We weren't yet. locked into the, the, the BBV. Crazy. Genuinely wild. What a long tortured history. So I guess I'm. I, I, mean, I think you started to ask this question, then we got distracted. But yeah, are you? Are you how are you feeling? Are you asking when will it end? Zero percent. When will it end? Yeah. I I love spending time with these people. I love being lulled into a complete acceptance of the fact that cops are gods who walk among us who should not have the same constraints that we experience. <laughs> Their yeah. ability to like govern who lives and who dies yeah. is all that matters. And I want to know that they are like emotionally in a place where they can continue to carry out that justice, meet it out with every fucking casing as it rattles off the ground, every carcass as it ping, bursts ping, through a window, ping, ping, every fucking ping. truck as it explodes, every highway filled with shrapnel and cars crushing each other, every single goddamn thug and drug dealer and, you know, let's be honest south of the border types who are infiltrating this country just to force cocaine onto every last one of us Babies. from the ver- from the smoking end of a syringe smoking end of a syringe should be mowed down imagery. by cops like Mike Lowry and Marcus Bennett wow. and Michael Bay is the godlike prophet figure who shows us a vision of the world where no, emotionally un- is- he shepherded us into this era okay and he can hand off the scripture to whoever he wants wow we need more cops like Mike and Marcus Every yeah. chase should happen in the middle of a dense downtown area. Yeah. Every explosion should happen on a highway. I, they should do like a hard boiled in the four, in the fourth one where they're just like in a fucking hospital, like taking like hiding behind like bassinets of like newborns while like mowing down like just like when are they gonna fight Russians or something right like they, yeah. they've done a lot of fighting cartels. Ooh, and, don't and... please stop talking. You're making me less <laughs> interested in these movies because yeah, I'm a little worried now because Marcus seems like he's definitely out now. Martin Lawrence, and as you said, Martin Lawrence is the fucking heart and soul of this film. He he is so wonderful in this movie. I think I laughed almost every every comic line he sold. I yeah, bought. He sold it to me, and I bought it gladly. Ha ha ha! You had a receipt in your hand for one one jolly old chuckle, one chuckle. courtesy of one Martin Lawrence. And you know, what? I left that theater. I had thousands of those receipts. Yeah, and stuffed I wish I in had every more. pocket. Yeah, sure. But no, I'm actually. I initially I was like. No, I'm not asking it. I'm I'm ready for more. But now that I think it through, um, Will Smith's definitely going to be in it. And it seems like his son's going to take over. Well, I mean, him and Tom... I think... No, Jaden doesn't like acting. He's done. No, no, not his son in real life. His son in this movie. Oh, okay. So I was like, yeah, Jaden is not going to be the next Mike Lowry. Are you kidding me? The character of his son is going to be... And he was a good villain. He was a great villain. I definitely didn't buy his... Good guy act at the end. It was a little abrupt, but you know I get it. Now I'm worried. Now you made me worried. Now I'm Marcusing all over the fucking. You're place. being a real Marcus right now. I don't want this. So, let, let, Please get me out of here. Joey Pants is dead. He'll never come back. That actually is a big blow against the film. Uh, no more Joey Pants is rough. But let me ask you this: the title of this movie is called Bad Boys for Life, and any anyone could be like, well, why did they blow the Bad Boys for Life on the third movie? <laughs> So is it going to be Bad Boys Forever next? Like, is that inevitable that it's Bad Boys Forever? It can't be Forever After. That's Shrek. That's Shrek. No, I think it's just going to be Bad Boys... F- oh, wait. Bad Fours. What the fuck? Bad, bad Fours? Bad Fours? Bad... What is the... Th- I don't even know what the bit is. Ba- well, Four sort of sounds like boys. Bad Four. It doesn't know what it is. sound like. Bad B Four Y S. Bad before. Ugh. That's it. That's it. That's genius. It's really How about bad, bad for boys? 
<laughs> How about this? That's four boys bad, colon, again. I like bad, so you'd read it bad boys. Bad for and boys. Four in the middle, but if you read it just It is bad for, boys. It's bad for boys. It's not good for young people to watch this and think that this is a way to live. I think so, because I think you really need to be wise and old to really see that, because it is cool. What, what you see on the screen is cool, but I think what the movie's really, why they work so well is that they actually grapple with that it's not cool. And it sucks, and he's losing out on everything. I think if they hadn't taken it there in this movie, I would have really been a little checked out. Or if they didn't like really try to tackle that gravitas, and they did, and I bought it, baby. Yeah, he's like Kaitel in Mean Streets. He's like fucking thinking about hell, you know. He's fucking Martin Lawrence being, dude, we're gonna rot in hell for what we've done. Yeah, I don't believe in hell. Hell believes in you. Yeah. I mean, do you think it, hell has posters of Will Smith? Hell awaits, motherfucker. It's coming. Yeah. I will say, as a Jew, the whole hell talk, it's, you know, I'm not, it's very unthreatening. I've always found, like, the satanic stuff very unthreatening, because it's like, we literally don't have that. Right. You fear God. Well, I think we more fear, like, the moral implications of life, more so than, like, the Godhead itself. Okay. Like, how to be a good man, how to be a a, a serious person, how to be a good partner and friend and podcast host and yeah. ordering journalist. and Yeah. Meanwhile, I'm over here, Satanist. Are you a Satanist? No. Because that would make you sort of like a, you know, kind of Christian. Because it's like... A right, you have to be a Christian to be a Satanist. Right. No, I, I don't really care. Do you think Satan will appear in the fourth Bad Boys film? Like they have to fight Satan. That'd be sick. What if they conquer the, the idea of good and evil itself in the well, fourth film? So I think that's... If it's called Bad Boys for Life, I think one of them is going to have to die. They're going to do full Endgame style, like Mike and Marcus go down saving the world together or whatever? Yeah. That'd be fucking amazing. And the bad boys are finally over. They kept saying one final time, then clearly hedged their bets. So it's so funny. Yeah. The, the cake and eating at two factor is delightful. Mm. Look, this is a killer fucking sequel. Can That's we, what this whole podcast can is. Can we all rank about. them now? Definitely. Oh yeah. my god. Are you ready? All right. And we I think it oh I think it works best if we go back and forth. Okay. Let's try it both the, ways. The best one. So start the you can go first, and then I'll just follow you with my favorite. How about we do, let's revert? Let's, let's go bottom to top. Yeah, bottom to top. And this is hard. It is very hard. Because these are all tightly grouped. Yeah. I would put number one at the bottom. I would also put number one at the bottom. I ah, fuck. It's tough. It's so hard. I, I might like put that movie this a one lot. at the bottom. Well, I'm Sorry. keeping... Okay. I'm putting this one at the bottom. Okay. Yeah. So here's putting my, here's my rationale. Yeah. One is a great introduction, but we just end up going so much farther. And as much as I like the first one, I like it more because of this movie. And I think that that's that weird cyclical nature of, of franchises. And obviously, though, we'll likely never do it. We talk about Star Wars all the time. Rogue One plays this fascinating role where when put chronologically into the series, it becomes this little spice onto the rest of the whole thing. Where it right. seems like ancillary, but actually, no, it makes the whole thing better. I love that. Yeah, so, that's so true. That's why it worked. That movie works so well. Right. Because it, so, it works so well on its own, but mm-hmm. it does. It gives life to this otherwise completely dead And, and this is the, the, the reverse of it for me. If the first one was just a standalone movie, it'd be like sort of fun and like, you know, a fine movie. The fact that this movie is where, the third movie is where it mm. gets to, it means I like the third one way more. Because at the end of the day, it's like, yeah, I love watching these guys get old, become a grandparents, like deal with the consequences <laughs> oh, of their so children. Hard. Right. So I would go for, for like we're not going back and forth. Let's just, right, bust just, do it. It. just do it. I would go one at the bottom, three in the middle, yep. and two on top. Two is a fucking f- psychedelic fever dream nightmare. Yeah. Uh, I might just have to give it a tie. I love what you just said. I that's why I flipped it because at first, yeah, one was there. I think their relationship is the meeting them is so nice. Yeah. It's like making out with someone you never made out with before. It's, it's just it's just like it's incredible to live in that space where this is the moment where it all began. They're perfect against each other. Mike Lowry, Mark, Will Smith's character is just like so much freer, I think, in that one. And it's just sort of more like joyful to watch him. Mm. And the relationship is super strong. Here after the second one, which like really that the second one was where things get much more complicated. And that's why it's number one. Shit just got real. Yeah, the shit just got real actually got real. And the third one is like a nice coast down in a lot of ways, still maintaining the height of the second one, but just like making a... Because there's some conclusions in the second one. But this one, I think, really keeps those conclusions, knows that there's still going to be problems, and further concludes. And I really feel like the ending of all these movies are really perfect. Yeah. So I think... Them sit on, on the fucking... In the bay, holding the the baby... In this one, oh, I loved it. So good. It's so good. 
It's it, like, honestly, like that is such a touching moment where they're just like singing bad boys to this new generation of potentially bad boys. That was amazing. Yeah, the, at the end of two where they're in the pool and yeah. dumps them into the... Oh, I love that shit. I love, <laughs> I I love, love all these, these movies. I, I mean, ranking them, it's sort of like I watched all the Wes Anderson movies in the same day before Moonrise Kingdom came out. And it sort of made me realize that as a sort of Wes Anderson freak like I am, yeah, I guess I could rank them if I had to, but ultimately, th- to me, they just are sort of one experience. And I just may- might just say that for bad boys. Like, yeah, there's some highs and lows in all of them, and overall... But it's the consistency, it's, it's the magic yes, of this series. It's hard to rank because, it, to me, they just feel like it's a nat- it's, it's like a one-movie experience that just keeps going. Right, and that's what's so wonderful about yeah, it. Yeah, this is perfect. And I want to close with the episode saying this. Between yes. Uncut Gems... And the muscular, rude, but charming member of the ammo team. This is officially the year where we wear sunglasses in the club. Absolutely. Two movies where people wear incredibly strong fits to the club. I know that one is set in 2012 and one is set in 20 whatever, but like. It doesn't matter. They're wearing sunglasses in the club. It works. No one's second guessing it. They see what's going on and they're like, yeah, sunglasses in the club. That's Please. where we are. Yeah, he wears, Will Smith wears sunglasses inside a lot, but. I think sunglasses in the club. If you see either of us in the club, you'll fucking know we're you, the guys in sunglasses. We're the guys in sunglasses. You'll thinking. know it's not just for us and our mil- fucking beautiful melodic voices. Yeah, because we have sunglasses on in inside the club. the club. Sunglasses in the club. That's twenty twenty. Bad boys for life. You got a seltzer, huh? Uh-huh. So you get a seltzer. Old Josh doesn't even get the old seltzer invite. You don't want a seltzer? Oh, no. I wouldn't want to trouble you. Oh, I was going to burp, but it didn't work. He was like he was pac manning there for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, trying to eat this little... Go- I'm just going to gobble up this microphone. Uh, yum, 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 yum. That's some good pre-roll. Pre-roll. Yeah, pre-roll. We love pre-roll. Here. Now we do. Here at uh, Josh and Charles Corp. One thing we value more Wait, than bro, anything else... Wait, bro. Are we else, starting? Are we starting, bro? One thing we value more than anything else is pre-roll. pre-roll. But it turns into post-roll. 